to the apostles, teaching and to fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Um, as we continue our series on uh, covenant membership, uh, this morning might be a little bit different. Um, really, for the past few weeks, we, we've talked about membership and um, what that is, and, and we looked at, uh, is membership biblical? And uh, then we started going through the mission statement here at Peace Haven, um, and we said that Christians exist, that you and I exist, and that Peace Haven will exist to uh, glorify God through worship, through maturing in, in Christ, and then reaching the world with the gospel. Um, and then this morning we're going to kind of turn inward and look at what that means for us here at, at Peace Haven, um, what that will, will look like, how we can flesh that out and, and live that out in our, our daily lives. Um, so I know that some of you have already filled out the affirmation online and some of the uh, and the digital directory uh, form online, and you'll hear me say that a lot this morning um, because we are, are kind of pushing for you all to do that if you want to be uh, a member. Even if right now you are already a member, uh, we will need to do that because this is something that we're going to be doing annually, uh, and we'll talk about that this morning. Um, so remember to fill out both the, the membership affirmation um, for each person in your family that is entering into the covenant of membership, and then uh, the digital directory form. And then next week, um, we'll be looking back again in the book of Mark, and uh, we'll be looking at Peter's great confession, and part of what we confess as a church is that Jesus is the Christ, and so it, it's kind of fitting that all of this kind of ties in together, and then we will be publicly... Uh, standing and affirming our, our covenant to one another. And so that's what we will be uh, doing next week. Um, the first week that we looked at this series, we, we kind of said that um, membership is for churches is not that kind of membership, where we, we think about perks and um, we, we think about this attitude and mindset of, of consumerism where it's uh, let me see and shop around and, and see what, what I can get the, the best deal for my money, uh, the best bang for my buck, which, which place has the most bells and whistles, but it's really this attitude of, of service and participation. And uh, in our members, new members guide, uh, it, it puts it this way, membership in our culture brings to mind ideas of privileges and rights that members receive if they pay certain dues. Covenant membership communicates active participation intentionality, and mutual commitment within the context of a sacred relationship between God and all those who voluntarily choose it. Covenant membership communicates that there is honor and value in publicly and intentionally prioritizing a commitment to that which is most valuable, God, His people, and His mission. And that's what we want to embody uh, as a, a church is, is saying that, yes, we, we are prioritizing our commitment to God, our, our Savior, our Creator, um, His people, and His mission to, to share the gospel with, with all people. And so we see that demonstrated in the book of Acts when, when we see the early church and, and how um, what they did and how that developed as, as Linda read uh, in Acts. I, I was reading that this past week as, as part of my uh, Bible reading. And, and Peter gives his sermon after the Holy Spirit comes down the day of Pentecost. And, and he preaches this sermon and, and people respond to the Gospel, respond to who Jesus is as the Messiah and as Savior. And it says that the, the church began and that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and the breaking of bread. Um, and to prayer, and they met in each other's household, and, and she read that this morning. And so in Luke, we see that they devoted themselves to these things. 
And that's really what we, we kind of want to look at a little bit closer. Uh, the first thing that she read is that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And so this is uh, sound doctrine, sound instruction from Scripture. Um, the apostles, as they wrote the Gospels, as we look at Scripture, we, we know that it is the inspired Word of God. And as these men wrote, they were moved by the Spirit. And, and so what they wrote, these letters to the churches, are Scripture. Um, but even before they were writing these letters, when they were together after Pentecost, uh, what they were teaching was Scripture. They were, they were teaching from the Old Testament and, and saying that, yes, Jesus is uh, fulfilling the prophecies of the Old Testament. He has fulfilled those, so He is the Messiah. Uh, that Jesus was crucified, that He uh, actually, in reality, did die. That's very important, that Jesus actually died, uh, that He was buried, and then He resurrected. And we sang about this that this morning uh, in Because He Lives, and that uh, phrase there in the song, that as death gives way to victory, that hit me um, in a, a new way uh, this morning. Hearing that death doesn't give way to, to nothingness, but death gives way to victory because Jesus has risen and defeated death and has been victorious over sin, death, and hell. Um, and so as, as Peter preaches um, in Acts, he says that the only proper response to who Jesus is is that we would repent and believe the gospel, that we would repent and be baptized. And then he goes on to say that the Holy Spirit has come and that all believers have access to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit embodies believers and He works within us to, to make us new, to transform our lives and, and give us a, a new identity in Christ, to give us a, a new purpose and give our lives new meaning. And so all of these things that the apostles taught uh, from God's Word, it, it carried weight and authority in their lives. Um, not only in principle, but in practice. And I, I know we've, we've talked about that quite a bit here recently. But again, I, I just wanted to emphasize that. And, and I think it was yesterday, maybe Friday, um, Scott shared a, a, a tweet on Facebook from uh, the failing pastor. Uh, and he said this, Christians are highly skilled at not letting Scripture interfere with their beliefs. And so as a church, that, that's not our goal. What, what we want as a church, what we want as Christians, is for, for Scripture not only to interfere with our beliefs and our own intuition and the, and the things that we would call good and, and evil in our, our own personal uh, self, but we want to be aligned to Scripture. We want Scripture to, to shape who we are how we think, how we act, the, the desires of our hearts. We want all of that to be shaped by God's Word and, and who He is. And so when that happens, when, when Scripture does shape us, when it does uh, inform us, then disciples are, are made because our, our lives point to Jesus. And so making disciples is not something that we just say, well, this is a, a project or a hobby that I'm going to do, but it really becomes who we are naturally, daily. Every, everything that we do, we, we are wanting to please God. We are wanting to pursue God. And so other people see that. And our lives start pointing more and more towards Jesus and the things that we do. And so uh, we see that in how this early church lived their daily lives. It says that they were committed to prayer. Uh, so they were committed to developing uh, the discipline, the spiritual discipline of, of prayer in their life as individuals. And then also, uh, they were committed to gathering corporately, gathering with other believers uh, to, to pray. And so, when we think about that and think about what prayer is for, prayer is, is, is a good thing. Um, because it, it shows unity, that we're, we're coming to God together, united in, in what we're asking God to, to do, uh, what we're asking God to show us. Uh, prayer is also a, a way that we can encourage other believers as we, we pray together. And, and prayer is a, a way that we can worship God as we, we thank Him for what He has done in, uh, in our lives and what He is doing. And, and so we can look back in the past and say, God, thank You for this. And look at a situation and say, God, I see You moving here. God, thank You for that. And so it's part of worship. Um, but the other thing that... Uh, Corporate prayer is, is good for. Uh, I spoke about this probably a, a couple months ago when we were gathered on, on Wednesday nights. Um, but when we do corporate prayer, uh, especially corporate-led prayer, where, where somebody is leading us in, in prayer, 
um, one of the benefits of that is that it actually teaches people uh, how to pray. Um, because a lot of people, when you talk about prayer, um, some people are afraid because they, they don't want to kind of stumble over their words um, or they're not sure how to pray. And so when we get up and we uh, have someone lead and I give you opportunities to lead, what we're saying is it, it, this doesn't have to be uh, refined. You don't have to use fancy words. This is us just speaking to a, a father that, that loves us. Who is, who is faithful, who hears us, and, and He's not impressed by our words. But we can come to Him and, and we can stumble over our words. We can just pour our, our hearts out to Him. And, and I shared about, uh, some of you remember Will and, and Lucy when they were here. And uh, in Sunday school class when Lucy uh, prayed, we had just this time where we were gathered together and we were praying. And uh, many of you know Lucy and she had this speech impediment where you really even couldn't understand her at times. Sometimes you had to, to see her mouth move to understand what she was praying. And we sat there in a circle and we all had our heads bowed and we were just taking turns praying and Lucy began to pray. And the thought hit me that you know, I, I can't even understand what Lucy is, is praying, but God does. God, God knows what Lucy needs, even before she's speaking it. And so she came to God in prayer. And, and so part of us reading publicly, when, when I ask you to, to come and stand and, and read in front of the congregation, in front of our, our church family, or, or to pray, is, is so we're showing other people that it, it's okay. It's okay to stumble over words in Scripture. It's okay to stumble over your words in prayer because God looks at the heart and we're coming to God and we're saying, God, I want more of you. And He doesn't expect us to be perfect. He doesn't expect uh, sometimes when the, the sound may mess up or the words on the screen mess up. It, it's okay because we're, we're not perfect people. But God still loves us. And it brings attention to that. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, I'll, I'll say one more thing. When uh, This past week, I was even reminded of that as, uh, as we prayed for Jeremy's family and we prayed for Randy. I remember um, Sunday afternoon, last Sunday, when, when Randy went into the hospital. And uh, we were here watching football and, and hanging out like we, we do on Sunday afternoon, several of us. And uh, I remember before we were going, Adam said, hey, you know, let, let's just pray. And so we, we gathered and circled up, and Adam just said, Father, and he just cried. And we stood there and we cried for several minutes. And then he said, in Jesus' name, amen. And that was it. But again, God knows what we need. And Romans 8.26 says that the Spirit groans for us with utterings too deep for words. And so they were committed to prayer. The next things we, we see is they were committed to signs and, and wonders. Um, and as we look at that and we say, well, well what do we do with that? Um, simply, the, the simple way to look at this is these were, were tangible Visible expressions of the faith that they had in Jesus in the early church. Now, now in the early church, these were often miraculous things. Um, there were often healings and often uh, casting out demons and, and things uh, like that. And, and today, how, how do we interpret that? What do we, what do we say about that? Um, I would say that first, we, we don't ever want to dismiss that God can still work through the miraculous. That God can still do miracles. But at the same time, remembering that the, the, the normal means of evidence, the normal means of, of proof for God is found in John 13, 35. It's our love for one another. And so when the early church did these signs and, and wonders, um, what they were doing is God was enabling this because as they were going to these other nations uh, and these other people that didn't see Jesus, um, they who didn't know the Old Testament Scriptures of the Messiah, that they were doing miracles and, and signs and wonders. And we see that every time that the, the Holy Spirit comes, um, that they are doing these signs and wonders as, as evidence, as proof that this is, this, we're not lying about this. 
Jesus was really the Messiah. Jesus is really our Savior. Jesus is really God. And, and this is the proof to, to back that up. And so that's what God does through the early church to, to prove and give uh, validity to who He is. And, and today, the, the typical and normal means for, for proof for that is Jesus says, they will know you by your love for, for one another. And so he, He's drawing attention to that love and He's saying, this is something that is, is unique, church. This is something that people can't find in social organizations and, and clubs. This is something that is unique to the church. This special kind of love and intimacy and relationship that I, I want you to have with each other. This unity that I, I want you to have with each other and with me. And then we see the, the next thing that they are devoted to is being gathered for worship, and we've talked about that, about reading the Word, speaking the Word, singing the Word, praying the Word, seeing the Word when we do baptism and, and communion, and then reflecting God's Word in our, our daily lives. And so the result of all of this is uh, God's church grows. How, how does His church grow? By disciples making disciples. And so we see the, the family of God being enlarged. We see the fellowship of God being enlarged. And it says they are devoted to the fellowship. And again, churches is not an organization. Uh, it's not an institution. It's not a, a club. Um, when you see fellowship there in the Greek, it's koinonia. And it means that there's solidarity. Uh, that there are close relationships. It's a, a partnership and a, a cooperation toward a, a common purpose and goal. And elsewhere in the New Testament, uh, it's translated as uh, sharing, as contributing, and as participation. And so the intent is that it's, it's more than just being friendly and nice to people. It's more than just being acquainted with people. But there's a, a closeness and a relationship between people. Martin Lloyd-Jones says this, What constitutes fellowship can be quite pathetic. Some people think in purely social terms. This is an idea that is frequently found in the church, and I want to ridicule it because it has nothing to do with Christianity. People even think that fellowship just means having a cup of tea and a biscuit together. I have known others who think of fellowship in these terms. At the end of service or during a service, the minister says, Now you must all have fellowship with one another. And he tells everyone to shake hands with the people sitting near them, and they all shake hands. Marvelous fellowship. Those are some people's ideas of fellowship. A superficial friendliness, a niceness, a joviality. In these ways, that great word fellowship has been degraded. And so when we look at Acts and we look at how these people did life with each other, that fellowship was this intimacy and this vulnerability that they had with one another. And so we see that in, in breaking of bread. And this is not just communion. A lot of times we think when we hear uh, breaking of bread, we, we hear that this is the bread broken for you, this is my body, and, and this is the cup. But it's more than just communion. These were meals and, and conversations that, that happened in each other's homes. And so the idea is that these people were doing life together, and they were involved in one another's lives. It's also prayer. Again, praying with one another to the point where we can confess our sins to each other and, and pray over those, confess our, our doubts and our fears, the, the problems that we face in our daily lives. Um, it's, it's praying and being reminded of, of Scripture and reflecting on the promises that God gives us in His Word and, and praying through those and saying, God, I, I trust this is what you said and I, I'm clinging to that and I'm reminded of that and thank you for that promise. Um, it's also rejoicing and praising and, and thanking God for the provision that He has given you in your life, the blessings that you have in your life. And so when we think about fellowship, it, it's not something that's accidental, um, but it has to be something that is intentional. And so that means that it, it's going to require work. It's going to require Effort. It's going to require picking up the phone. It's going to require gathering together and, and hanging out with one another. Um, being involved in each other's lives. And so we have to pursue that, but we also have to be open to that. Um, and so we want to be committed 
to meeting corporately. And we see that in the, the, the early church, that they were committed to going to the temple. And then also committed to meeting privately. And we, we see that um, when they go to each other's homes. And, and just a, another side note here. Um, I kind of thought about that this morning. We live in a culture, um, we, we lack our privacy. We, we like to, to kind of keep things separate. And so I, I think a lot of times that adds to what appears to be hypocrisy in the, in the church because we, we like to keep so many things private and then we're, we're guarded. And so even when you think about having someone over at your house, um, Amanda and I, we're, we're guilty of this because it's like, you know, we would invite people over, but we don't want them to see the mess. And, and that's funny because you're, you're kind of you're kind of there. I'm sorry. It's my mess, too. I love you. Um, but but that's that's where we are. right? We're like we, we, we have to make sure the toilet doesn't have those rings in it and and all the clothes are out of the floor and and, you know, the bar is cluttered and, and we have all those things, but we don't want to let people in. Because we're afraid they'll see the mess. Because we know what happens, right? Because we've been to somebody's house that's messy before, and when we leave, we're like, dude, can you believe that mess that they made? And so that's, that's our conversation on the way home. That happens, right? And, and we can laugh about that, but guys, that, that's the same way with our personal lives. I don't want to let you in. I don't want to let you in. Because I don't want you to see the mess. That is Timothy Pruitt. And Keith doesn't want to let people in. Because he doesn't want people to see the mess. That is Keith Miles. And God is saying, that's not the way I designed this to work. Because if you never let people see the mess that is you, then how can they encourage you? How can they better equip you? How can they pray with you if you don't let them in? And so Jesus is, is, is saying that, that we'll know each other by our love because when we, when we love, and I, I do see the wreck that is Keith Miles, that I don't go, dude, how dare you? You're horrible. But I say, hey man, can I, how can I pray for you in this? Keith, I see something in your life and, and you know, I think there's something that you're not believing that, that God has said in His Word. And let's, let's talk about that. And keep some of your doubts and some of your fears may be, be coming because you're not trusting this promise in Scripture. But if we're not close enough, if we're not open enough with each other to, to do that, then we, we've missed out. We've missed out. And, and I, I know I said this earlier when we, we talked about church membership, but we're, we're so afraid of fear. We're, we're, we're so afraid of hate that we're missing out on love. And I think that's a lot of times where we get paralyzed. And God's saying, that's not the way I designed it. But I, I want you in each other's lives. I want you in each other's homes. I want you to, to pick up the phone. I want you to be uh, pursuing these relationships and be open to these relationships. We also see that this fellowship, it's compassionate. And so it says that they sold their possessions as any had need. And that's important because th this is not a, a form of socialism. The early church did not sell everything they had and combine all of their funds into one pool of money for, for everybody to, to just take from. What it says is that as people had needs, as, as things came up in, in people's lives, then people gave from their abundance. Even if it meant, hey, I've got some extra things over here that I can sell and get rid of to help this person, I, I'm going to do that. And so the idea is that these people were not just living for themselves, but they were close enough to each other to recognize needs that arose. And they cared enough to ask, hey, do you have a need? And then they were compassionate enough to give and, and respond and meet that need. And so all of these things that we have talked about this morning, we're, we haven't, we're not going to exhaust this, but... Uh, what does this look like at Peace Haven? Um, really, guys, that's, that's the question that we always need to be asking. Um, as a church, are we devoted to teaching and fellowship? As individuals, am, am I, are, are you devoted to teaching and fellowship? How, how can those things be cultivated? How can those things be nurtured? How can those things be prioritized in our lives? 
And so uh, some of the ways that, that we think that this can be nurtured and cultivated and, and prioritized is simply by affirming or emphasizing our covenant often. And so that's one of the reasons we, we want to, to focus on this idea of covenant membership. So quarterly, we will be uh, affirming new members that say, hey, I want to enter uh, covenant membership at, at Peace Haven. And so we will do this by having uh, a membership class. And in that membership class, we're going to focus on uh, teaching and, and doctrine. And then annually, we're, we're going to have a public affirmation uh, that we reaffirm our commitment to one another. And so again, we're, we're saying, hey, there is fellowship here. There is participation here. And we, we want to emphasize that uh, every year. The other way is by asking ourselves questions, by examining ourselves, by, by surveying our lives and, and taking inventory. And so we, we ask ourselves, well, what is my responsibility? What are my obligations? What are my priorities? What are my interests, my, my spiritual gifts and my, my strength? Um, where is it in my life that I have an abundance of something where I can give and invest in other people? And so we want to take ownership because we, we recognize that that church is not a building, but that it, it's people, that it's these uh, souls that are sitting in the chairs and that are, are gathered uh, around one another. And so we ask, how can I serve and invest in other people inside the church and then outside in our community? How can the elders better equip and encourage and, and shepherd how can I use my time, talents, and, and treasures to build up the body? We, we want to follow uh, this biblical pattern that we see in Acts. It's, it's not a formula, um, but it is a, a pattern that is worth noticing and worth uh, mimicking. So devoted to the apostles' teaching and God's Word, that's reflected in our, our statement of faith, our, our core values, our, our membership covenant, um, where we summarize and, and give a uh, scriptural explanation of our beliefs. So we say, well, this is who God is. This is who we are. Uh, this is what sin is. This is what salvation means uh, for people. This is uh, what the church is. This is how we... Uh, define marriage. This is how uh, we define the family and our mission to other people. We're, we're united and committed to what Scripture teaches on those things. And, and in that commitment, these truths should bear weight in our individual lives. Uh, it, it should bear weight on, on how we live. It's, it should be the, the foundation for uh, our identity and our, our purpose and, and how we live our daily lives. And then we also believe that these truths are the truths that can uh, radically change the lives of other people. That only God's Word is, is the thing that can change the lives of other people. Is God working through His Word and the Spirit working through His Word. And so we're united in our submission and obedience to God's Word. And so that means as, as elders, um, we appoint elders and deacons who, uh, according to the criteria that is presented in Scripture, uh, as elders, we are devoted to pray for God's direction and guidance for the church. Uh, we are to responsibly use God's resources and be good stewards. Um, we have a responsibility to care for our church family through biblical teaching and instruction, uh, through guarding against false teaching that people may be exposed to or, or that may uh, even come into the church to guard against that, uh, to lovingly administer church discipline when needed, and to teach and set an example with our lives. But not only do elders have a commitment and a responsibility, but each of you as, as church members have a commitment and responsibility to submit to the authority of Scripture um, and hold your teachers accountable. Hold, hold me, listen, hold me accountable to what God has said. Pursue Jesus through reading and prayer and fellowship and, and spiritual disciplines in your own personal life. We have a, a responsibility and commitment to participate and engage in gospel-centered community, to be good stewards of your own time and talents and, and treasures and how you use those to serve God and serve others, and then to seek to, to walk in holiness. Um, not to be sinless, I know you've heard this, not to be sinless, but to sin less, and then have lives that are, are bearing fruit, um, have lives that are productive and fruitful for God. And so, also to be devoted to fellowship. So we submit and serve in our community. 
Uh, we're committed to regular attendance and participation, um, and, and that's important. Attendance and participation is important. It's, it's not a mandatory, mandatory thing. It's not like we're going to take role and, and give you gold stars or something like that. But if you're not here, how can you participate? And so attendance and participation uh, is important because that's how we walk alongside one another. That's how we cultivate relationships. That's how we have opportunities for conversations and opportunities to pray with one another. Uh, that's how we serve alongside one another and, and volunteer um, for ministry teams and, and serve our community. And so two ways that we want to encourage this kind of, of fellowship and this kind of participation um, is first to invite you to, to join a ministry team. Um, that's why we ask on the membership form uh, what your, your interests are, what your um, availability is, and what you would, would like to do. E- even if it's just checking a box that says, hey, you know, I, I can't really serve on one of these teams, um, but I- if there's an opportunity for me to, to volunteer and help with some kind of activity or something, let me know, and, and I'm willing to, to volunteer. And so uh, on our, our form, we have a, a list of these teams. I, I don't know if you can see that. I'll, I'll kind of read that. So we have audio-visual teams, um, which is kind of like sound and lighting and building and grounds team, uh, a child care team, the crisis center team, it's on there twice because I had to go back and fix that, uh, the digital media team, which is like website, social media, live stream, uh, discipleship team, which is leading and teaching in our, our life groups or, or Sunday school classes when we get back to those, uh, financial team, which would be responsible for stewarding the, the church finances, uh, the, the local outreach team, uh, which seeks to engage and, and serve our community, Uh, Our mission team, which seeks to serve and encourage our local and global mission partners. Uh, The worship team, which is up here leading worship through music. Um, And then lastly, volunteering. And so uh, if you'll notice, there's an asterisk by that because we we expect. We expect you to say, hey, I, I want to serve because that's part of being a covenant member. It's saying, I'm not here just to take But I'm here to serve alongside of other people and to serve others. And so we ask that you find a place to plug in and plug in in, uh, to serve alongside people. The second way is this uh, digital membership directory. And so if you go to the website, uh, you can go to the website, findpeace.churchcenter.com. I put that up there. If you have a pen and want to write that down, or if you forget it and come to me later, I can show you. Um, There's an app, and then you can also find that on your computer. Um, But the way we are doing this is we'll have access through this website or the app. And on this, you'll see a calendar of events, so you can see what we're doing on Wednesday night, whether it's a night where we're working in the the crisis center, um, whether we have uh, worship team practice on that Wednesday, uh, the the Easter drama, uh, junior camp, you can see those dates as we work on that. Um, you can see if we're having meals or, or different kind of events as, as we update and add on that calendar. Um, and also covenant membership class dates, that, that's where uh, those will be. Uh, but then also there's this digital directory. And so you can view that by individuals uh, or a family. So you can say, hey, who is in uh, the Miles household? Who's in the Pruitt household? And, and you can click those and, and see the people in those families and, and be able to, to get in contact with those people. Um, and I did want to, to mention this, that this is only available to those who are in covenant membership. And so this is locked, guys. In other words, your, your information is, is safe. Um, this is not out there for whoever to get. Uh, This is something that only our church family will have access to um, and be able to access and and use. And you can also edit and and update uh, this information as you need to. Um, So each of those you you can click on and say, hey, this this is my phone number. Uh, I got a new cell phone, so now my phone number's changed uh, possibly, and so this is what it is. Or uh, I forgot my email password and had to delete my email, and and so now I've got a new email address, and and you can change those things. Um, You can also go in and uh, change. uh, I I don't want my kid's picture to be shown, but you know, 
if it's only accessible to, to church members, then, hey, we don't, we don't have to worry about that. But you can say, you know, I, I don't want to share this email or I don't want to share this phone number. Uh, those things are available for you to, to use if you want to. Um, but we are excited a, a, about this. Uh, I'm especially excited because it, it helps us to put names with faces, especially as we grow and new people come into the church and we can't remember, uh, you know, I, I remember this person's name, but I don't kind of remember what they look like or I remember seeing that face, but I can't remember um, their name. I, I forget that. Um, it also will help us to, to stay connected. And so it's, again, secure and, and accessible uh, at the same time. Uh, it's easy for uh, us to, to update that, easy for you to, to update your information, and then that's automatically updated for, for our leadership records. Um, and then it also, uh, one of the things that I've uh, kind of mentioned last week and even seen this week if some, as some of these cards have been rolling in is um, it's awesome to see these names of, of people that you have said, this coming year, this is the person I want to disciple. This is the person that I'm trying to reach. And so as I look through that, God said, I can pray for you. And our leadership will, will be able to pray for you. And not only that, but to say, hey, how's it going with this? Do you need any help with that? Um, can, we, can we meet with this person? Is there something that we can do to, to disciple this person together? And so we can, we can pray uh, for that. But it also gives us those areas, again, where you have said, hey, this is where I would like to serve. This is, this is where I would be available if, if, if needed. And, and this is the, the gifting that I feel God has given me. And this is how I would like to, to serve the body of, of Peace Haven. And we can see that. Um, and then another thing finally is uh, there's a place for you to, to kind of put some ideas or um, suggestions that, that you might have of, of what we can do better as a church, ways we can improve or, or things that you would like to see implemented and, and you can put those on there. And so we, we pay attention to those things. We're, we're, we'll be looking at those things. So it gives us some, some feedback and, and we'll do this again. Every, every year we'll do this. And so we're constantly saying, this is not, guys, hear me, this is not my church. This is not Scott and Keith's church. This is God's church. And so we all have a responsibility. And so when we have that feedback, that's a way for all of us to hold each other accountable and say, hey, this is where we need to improve. This is something that we, we've fallen back on. And, and so this is something we may want to, to, to pursue. This is something we may want to, to think about implementing. And so again, th those two forms that you need to fill out for covenant membership, both of those are found on our, our website, findpeace.today. Um, and so uh, that's where you can, can edit some of that information. Um, but if you will go to uh, who we are, and you'll see Exploring Covenant Membership, and I've got the big blue arrow there so you can see that, uh, the Membership Affirmation Form and the Membership Directory Enrollment Form, if you'll fill those out. Um, the Membership Affirmation Form, you'll, you'll affirm our statement of faith. You'll answer some questions about baptism. Um, you'll see the opportun opportunity to, to volunteer and uh, submit ideas. And the important thing for you to hear uh, about this form is that each person in your family that wants to enter into the covenant of membership needs to fill out this form. It, it's not a, a catch-all um, and, and so Keith would need to fill out the form and Linda would need to fill out the form and, and both of them would have this form filled out and say, yes, I, I commit. Because this is an individual commitment. Uh, I, I don't want people saying I'm, I'm going to commit my whole family because it's an individual commitment. We're, we're taking ownership. We're taking personal responsibility and saying, I commit to this. Uh, and then uh, the membership directory uh, enrollment form, that is just one per household. So Linda could fill that out uh, for her and Keith, um, or Pam could fill that out for her and Gary. Um, and so uh, household information would, would be listed there for leadership. Um, I, I know probably one of the things that would um, kind of freak, especially ladies out, uh, it ask for your birthday. Uh, that's not displayed on the membership directory. I just want to put that out there. So your, 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 how old you are is, is safe. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, that's household information for leadership. Uh, and then there's also a, a box that you would need to check for permission to list, be listed on the directory. We, we don't want to just publish 
uh, your information if you don't give us permission. And so you'll, you'll need to check that box. There's also a box that says, hey, I filled this out for leadership records, but I don't want my information on the directory. And, and we'll honor that. We'll, we'll say, you know, we're, we're not going to force anybody to do that. So if you choose not to have that published, that's okay. Um, each year... Uh, we will be reaffirming this. Let me back up. I skipped a place. Remember, this is only accessible uh, to, to members. Uh, in the future, new members will, will learn about our church in uh, the new membership class. And, and again, this will be a short one or two session class because we're, we're not aiming to disciple people in that class because that's not discipleship. We, we've talked about that. Discipleship happens daily. It, it happens from here to eternity until we're perfected. We'll, we'll be discipling one another. Um, discipleship happens over time. And so each year we will reaffirm our, our covenant. Uh, we'll take time to remember and reflect uh, on our commitment to each other. Uh, we'll take time to update our information where we want to serve, our, our household information, if any of that has changed. Um, and so that's kind of where we're going with this. Uh, and that's been the, the whole purpose of, of this series is to kind of talk about what that looks like at Peace Haven. And so next week, again, we will continue our series in Mark. Uh, we will publicly affirm our covenant to one another. So again, please fill these two forms out if you haven't. Yet, even if you are already a member now, we, we need you to fill those forms out. Um, and then also, uh, if you do need a, a paper copy, um, those are, some of those are available uh, when you walk out here to the, to the left. Um, and then if those run out, please see me or, or one of the elders and, and we can get you a, a paper copy of that. Um, and then, again, if you have any questions uh, about any of that, please uh, speak to, to myself or one of the other elders. Um, and then I, I just want to end this morning. I know this is, is taking up a, a lot of time and has been different. Um, but I just want to end by reading a familiar passage in Hebrews. Um, it says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. And so to end this morning, regardless of where you plug in, regardless of where people who are, are watching this online plug in, um, again, there are, are, are several good churches in our community that people could plug into. Um, but regardless of where you plug in, Christians exist to worship. Um, Christians should be seeking to uh, mature and, and conform to the image of Christ, and, and Christians should be serving and making disciples of all nations. But do get plugged in somewhere. Um, the church is not a building. It's the people. It's a, a, a people united in Christ. And, and we don't come to church to be served, but to serve others. And remember that the church needs you, and you need the church, and there's, there's mutual benefits in that. So find a body of believers and uh, commit and be devoted to the Word and be devoted to fellowship. And, and lastly, to bring glory to God. Um, so again, I hope you'll fill out those forms. I, I hope you guys have um, maybe learned some things and, and been challenged by some of this that we have talked about. I, I know that I have. Um, I, I know developing those relationships um, that's something that's important. And when you are, I, I know you probably can't tell because I speak in public, but I, I'm really an introvert, guys. Um, it, it's really hard for me to meet new people. That's hard for me to do. I love people, and I, I try to, to, to love and serve people, but it's really hard for me to meet new people. And, and so uh, sometimes it's, it's really hard to, to develop those relationships, but I know it's important. I know it's vital, and if, if we're going to have the relationships and that unity and that closeness and, and be able to, to encourage and equip other people and, and be um, able to, to pour in and invest into the, the lives of other people, it's going to take work. And for me, that, that means uh, overcoming some fears. Um, it means um, ignoring some of the uncomfortableness I, I might feel when I try to make small talk to introduce myself to people. Um, but in the end, I, I know it's worth it. And uh, I know it's worth it because God says that it's worth it. 
He, he says that iron sharpens iron. He says that we need a, a friend um, that, that can help us to, to grow in our love for Christ and that uh, we were meant for community. We, we were made for community. And uh, so I, I hope you guys will be encouraged and challenged in this. And uh, that, that's my, my goal for, for Peace Haven. Um, and I know there are some things that we have done well. And I'm not getting up here and saying, hey, you guys suck. Um, but I know there have been some things that we're doing well. And there are some things that we can do better. And uh, we'll, we'll be blessed and the church will, will grow um, for that. And, and we'll be able to, to love and show Jesus to, to people who have never heard the gospel. And that will be awesome. And so uh, let's close in, in, in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your word. And uh, God, I just pray that uh, you will help us not just to know these things in principle, um, but that we would be able to put those in practice. And uh, God, help us to, to love one another. Um, help us to, to invest in each other's lives, to, to cultivate and develop those relationships with each other because um, our faith can be strengthened and uh, we can accomplish more united in you with each other than we can alone. And uh, God, I just pray for our, our church family, um, for each individual that um, you would foster that compassion within us, um, that you would, not only the, the compassion, God, but the, the patience that we need um, to deal with each other sometimes. Um, God, just help us to, to navigate through these relationships well and uh, that our, our desire would always be that you would be glorified and uh, that other people would see you because of our love for, for one another. And uh, God, we just thank you so much for, for sending your son um, to die for our sins and uh, to save us. And, and God, just help us not to take that gift of salvation for granted, um, but help us to, to work out our faith with fear and trembling and uh, to put that into action. And uh, we just pray that your spirit would, would continue to move in our lives and produce fruit within us. And uh, God, we just thank you for, for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope you guys have a, a good week. And uh, we'll see you next week.